Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will discuss how to analyze non-normal data in SPSS MS. In traditional structural equation modeling, assumptions of multivariate normality are often required for accurate parameter estimations and hypothesis testing. However, when the data are non-normal such as skewed or heavy tail distributions, these assumptions may not hold true. Multivariate normality is an assumption associated with the maximum likelihood. Violation of multivariate normality will result in maximum likelihood estimations having inflated chi-square value. As chi-square value is inflated, it will suggest that the model poorly fits the data. This will decrease the size of the standard errors for the parameters in the model, which will lead to type 1 error. Now, what is the remedy for non-normal data? Bootstrapping is a resampling technique commonly used in structural equation modeling to address the issues of non-normal data. It is particularly useful when the assumptions of normality are violated, allowing for more robust inferences in SEM models. It generates the multiple resamples of the original data set by drawing observations with replacement. You can see here this is the original data. Resampling will be done with replacement to find the statistics and from that the, we will get the distribution which is a bootstrap distribution. By creating these resamples, the bootstrapping provides an empirical approximation of the sampling distribution of the model parameters. Procedure for bootstrapping. In MS interface, configure the bootstrapping settings for the, for the analysis. This includes specifying the number of bootstrap samples to generate and setting the seed for the replicability. Normally, we set the same, uh, bootstrapping to 5000. Run the analysis. Execute the bootstrap analysis in Amos, and the software will generate multiple bootstrap samples by resampling from the original dataset. The Bolenstein bootstrap is used in SAM to address the issue of non normal data and provide more robust standard error estimates for the model parameters. It is a resampling technique. That involves, that involves generating multiple bootstrap samples from the observed data, fitting the model to each sample and estimating the model parameters. With the obtained parameter estimates from the bootstrap samples, Amos can calculate robust standard errors and construct bootstrap-based confidence interval. These intervals provide more reliable estimates of the parameter uncertainty even in the presence of non-normal data. Now, let us see how we can analyze this non-normal data in SPSS MS. So for this, we will go in MS. Now I will activate the analysis properties. Make sure that there are no missing data. When you go for bootstrapping, you cannot activate the estimate means and intercept. Even if the tick is there, remove the tick. We cannot use this option in case of bootstrapping and your data should not have any missing value. Now go in the bootstrapping. Activate this perform bootstrap and make it 5000 and click on Wallenstein bootstrap. Close this. Run from here. Now click view text and click on bootstrap distributions. So you can see here the bootstrap distributions are there. N is 5000 and the mean of this is 175.539. Now let's try to understand what these figures are. These are the sampling distributions of chi-square values. 5000 samples with replacement. We are having 5000 chi square values, and this is a distribution for it. This sampling is done with the replacement, and on that basis, we got this distribution. Now, click on the Bolenstein bootstrap. The model fit better in 4009 bootstrap samples. It fit about equally well in zero bootstrap sample. It fit worse or fail to fit in 991 bootstrap samples. Now we will talk about the overall. You will have to see the p-value, right? 
the null hypothesis of this particular test, that is a Bolenstein bootstrap, the null hypothesis is model is correct. This is our null, right? As the p-value is more than 0 0.05, so we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that the model is correct, which is quite good. Now we can proceed further. Now I will again go in the analysis properties. Again click here. Make sure that you remove Wallenstein bootstrap and activate bias corrected confidence intervals. Make sure that this is activated. Now close this and again run the model. Now click on view text. Click on the regression results. Scalars regression results. Now you can see here, uh, these are the errors. These are the errors under the assumptions of normality. These errors are under the assumptions of normality. Now, when I will click here on bootstrap standard errors, so these are the errors when uh, the bootstrapping is done. So these are adjusted standard errors under bootstrapping. When bootstrapping, when we are doing the bootstrapping of non-normal data in SCM, the focus shifts from relying on assumptions of normality to utilizing a distribution of parameter estimates obtained from the bootstrap samples. You can interpret the parameter estimates and their confidence interval based on the distribution, providing more robust and accurate inferences. Let's try to understand this concept. I'll click on the bootstrap confidence here. Now, just see tangibility and tangibility is measured with the help of four items, four measured variables. So, similarly, reliability, then responsiveness, assurance and empathy now this is a lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval you have to see if the zero is not present in between these two this means that this particular measured variable is significant you can see here this is from plus to plus so t3 is significant and this we can further confirm by p-value. Let's try to understand the concept. If it is positive to positive, you see the values positive to positive, it means that this measured variable is significant, positive to positive, or it can be negative to negative. In that scenario also, we will say that this measured variable is significant. But in any case, if this particular value moves from negative to positive or positive to negative, it means that there is a presence of zero in between these two confidence interval and that particular measured variable is insignificant. I have simply copied this particular results here to make you understand. See, this is positive to positive significant. Say, for example, if this was negative to negative just a minute so positive to positive this is significant negative to negative this is significant for just the explanation i have changed the values negative to positive it means that in between these two confidence intervals zero is present this means that this measured variable T1 will become insignificant. We are interpreting with the help of lower and upper confidence interval as we have done the bootstrapping here. That's the only reason. So this was all about analyzing non-normal data in SPSSMS. For more videos on SPSSMS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please refer my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on SPSS MS. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button.